But first, let's talk about some pre-flight history while you all get ready. As I, beforehand, last year, we did have two amazing historians who were able to come here, one's the audience today, uh, that were able to cover the Air Force's 75th anniversary, or its 75th birthday. And that was the theme we went on, our history, our heritage, and how AFRL's been a part of that from the beginning. Now, I should mention, I did have a minor in history, so while I'm not quite them, look over you, Jeff, I am gonna do my best. So using that skill, and my skill in lab life, I do know a bit about the history of AFRL Inspire. So let's go on a journey together. Back in 2015, a long time ago, we had two people with an amazing idea. What if we got the best and brightest to tell like we've been saying, how AFRL is a one team, one fight kind of idea, how we're working together to change the world. But these people are gonna show it on stage. One of the dynamic duo that made that happen was Dr. Carrie Ann Hobbs, a brainchild of hers and the person we'll get to next. And Carrie Ann Hobbs, um, you may know her as the self-proclaimed rocket science Barbie, and as one of our talks last year, Driver's Ed for Space AI. Now, that talk and every other talk we've done since 2015, you can see on our AFRL YouTube channel, any point. So you can kind of go through that history at your leisure, get a feel for how it all went. It's pretty cool, trust me. But I did mention Duo. The other part of that, was Dan Berrigan. And I should mention for the top, he was one of the first hosts of AFRL Inspire. So uh, no pressure on me, but I'm gonna do my best. Also, I love that Dan heads out there, it's very good. <laughs> so you'll see pictures of that online, don't worry folks. So Dan Berrigan, uh, he, Russ, we're gonna go into this, he is no better person to start off this event than he himself, he was there at the beginning. And Dan is, we mentioned here when we're kind of running through everything, was that program, or sorry, he was turned a programmer. He was a chemist. Now, still is, but programming is not easy. And let's talk about that. He is following the footsteps of many people before him. We're talking Silicon Valley folks who started off their projects in their garages. Dan took more of an underground approach, literally, starting a lot of what he's talking about today in his basement. So, it's incredible, like trust me, when you get up here, he's gonna wow you. And we don't know where journey's ever gonna take us, but we do know if we find the right team Anything's possible. So please, join me in welcoming to the stage to tell his story about hashtag tackle the toil, Dr. Dan Berrigan. <laughs> Time. I don't know about you, but I hate it when the government wastes my time. In The Art of War, Sun Tzu wrote, the value of time, that is, of being a little bit ahead of your opponent, is often more valuable than superior resources or greater numbers. I love the urgency of this message. It's also a reminder that no matter how big or small your team or budget is, that you can sabotage it by wasting everyone's time. And to realize the angst that I hold in this, we have to do a little bit of arithmetic. So first, if we look at AFRL, about three-fifths of our workforce are scientists and engineers. That's 6,500 people. Now, if we assume a 40-hour-a-week work schedule, how many hours does AFRL have each week to accomplish its mission? That's right, 260,000. Sounds like a lot, right? But you gotta remember, you work for the Department of Defense. So, your day probably looks a little bit like mine. I put my hot coffee down on my desk, I open up my laptop, I turn it on, and I wait. And so I say, here, I'll do something else. All right, I'll go get that data off that experiment I ran last night. Oh, gotta air gap it, I gotta scan it, and I wait. Oh, cool, the computer's back up. Let me go check my email. Ooh, it's encrypted. Wait. That time you thought you had feels real finite, real fast. And compounding that challenge is the fact that what we work on here at AFRL is broad and complex. From quantum sciences to autonomy, from advanced materials to biotechnology, from directed energy to satellites and all their interwoven complexities. More than that, where one of these technologies and when they're gonna be a game changer on the battlefield is, is a guessing game sometimes. We don't always know. From penicillin to plastics, discovery, transformational discoveries have been largely teams of intelligent people or clever people, iterated failure, and luck. We cannot forget the luck part. 
because on this journey and discovery, there is no shortcuts. I'm Dan Berrigan, and aside from being a serial complainer sometimes, my, my, my time in AFRL has been spent largely investigating advanced manufacturing technology. And just a few years ago, I was asked to lead a group in this area, and we felt the same challenges of limited time, limited budget, limited people, and having to stay one step ahead of our competition. And so, you know, it was with, with in this area, we had to change the math that our team was based on. First, productivity. That is, how much time can our team stay focused on task? Multiply that by two, the scale. How, many, how much mass from our partners and collaborators can we put on the targets we care about? The product of those two is faster outcomes, meaning that an increase in one or both of these ideas is a force multiplier. And so, now you might say, increasing productivity in the world's largest bureaucracy, that sounds like a challenge. Or doing it with scale when, you know, you have limited a couple people on the research group, and you're right. I mean, when I wanted to collaborate with a partner in Atlanta on advanced robotics, I was mailing hard drives. It took four days to get that sucker from here to Atlanta. That is 96 hours wasted. You know why? Toil. You know what toil is? It is the manual, mundane, devoid of any enduring value task that takes us away from what we really care about. And it was in this crucible of urgency that the AFRL Google Cloud Pilot was born. With it, we were able to connect with our partners and simultaneously analyze data from our experiments. We were able to jump in and simultaneously develop code uh, with those same people. And we were finally able, with this, with this software, to boldly go where everyone else had gone before, <laughs> into the 21st century. <laughs> Unfortunately, as our team was ca cap capturing momentum, the pandemic took hold. And the IT ecosystem around us completely unraveled. My colleagues were cr organizing critical research tasks over group text messages. They were waiting until 3 o'clock in the morning to get onto a VPN so they could check their email. That said, not to humble brag at all, but like our small team, didn't miss a beat. But I couldn't let my colleagues struggle like this, so I reached out to some senior leaders, and I said, hey, we might be able to do something to fix it. What do you think? What could we do? Their response, make it go viral. In hindsight, probably not the best choice of words for March of 2020, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we did. 20 users became 50, 50 became 100, 100, 500. By the end of 2020, we had over 1,000 users from across the lab. The scale, or the, 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 the scale of, of, of it was overwhelming. We couldn't keep up. To add one new user to this platform meant I had to enter 15 different pieces of information manually. Doing it once, was a task. Annoying, but a task. Doing it 30 times a day is toil. In other words, you all were wasting my time. <laughs> and that's really where I learned the first lesson of this project. And that is, it isn't fixed until it's fixed for everyone. <laughs> and so, we had one solution. Automate the crap out of everything. There's one problem, though. I'm a chemist. I have no idea how to code. And so enter Lauren Ferguson. Yeah. 
Lauren is a PhD researcher, PhD in, mathematician, uh, PhD in mathematics, and a whiz at software development. And moreover, she shared the same passion for fixing this problem as I did. And with it, we started tackling all sorts of aspects of this pilot, from help desk tickets to, if I might say so myself, creating some pretty dank memes. <laughs> but what Lauren did was uncover a hidden gem of this pilot. And that is, as an idea and a concept grows and takes a life of its own, people are wanna, going to want to gravitate and take ownership of it and run with it. You have to let them. And really what it taught me is the next lesson, which is that it's not just who we fund, but it's who we inspire to work on our problems with us. And so what Lauren did was inspire me to put on my big boy pants and do what I should have done a long time ago and learn how to code. I did what any millennial would do. I binge watched YouTube. <laughs> From Python to JavaScript, to APIs, maybe a dusting of cat videos. But, <laughs> but with it, soon after, Lauren and I were cranking out all sorts of self-service automation scripts so that our users could then, on demand, get shared drive access, create groups, add their external partners on demand. We got the governance we needed to keep it from the, being the Wild West, and they got rid of a gatekeeper and myself waiting for me to answer the email. So at this point, we had productivity, we had scale, we had no money. <laughs> and so that's, that's where, that's where you know, we, um, we really had to reach out to each one of you, our wingmen. And we asked you, we said, hey, well, actually, back up. <laughs> Before that, we realized that just because the pandemic or, or that the, our, the needs of external collaboration weren't going to go away just when the pandemic subsides, that we needed to keep this going. But we were afraid that our leadership only saw this as a video calling machine and not what it really was key element of accessing the scale of our external collaborators. And so to address that, we reached out to you, our wingmen, and we said, hey, this pilot could very well go away, and we need your help. And so we put a slide deck in a chat channel, opened it up to everybody and said, hey, we need you to share your stories of impact. Tell us how this changed your world. And they did, one at a time, two, then four, then, tw then 20, all the way up to 150 different slides of impact from across the lab. The message was clear. Our scientists were not going back to mailing hard drives. Armed with your stories, we went into battle. We enlisted the help of AFRL Public Affairs and, and married that with the Google marketing team in order to create a blog entry where the AFRL commander declared, we, AFRL will collaborate to innovate. Soon after, Google Alphabet CEO Sundar Pichai pulled on that thread and gave AFRL a shout out in a public forum. And it was thanks to you and your stories that gave us the time we needed to address the 485 some odd controls that allowed us to get our full authorization to operate. That authorization to operate at impact level four is a first of its kind in the Department of Defense for all the Google apps. But more importantly than that is that what we documented and what we shared can be leveraged across the Department of Defense, across any stakeholder who needs those tools to accomplish their own mission. And so maybe, just maybe, they can, we can start to spur some competition between these big tech giants. And that's, it. And that's really where I learned the third lesson of this story, or this journey, is that return on investment isn't just in dollars. It's an influence. It's in seeing a colleague or an employee realize their full potential 
and it's in time. Let's go back to that slide deck for a minute. If you look and pull on the thread of each of these stories, you'll see one of your colleagues taking that simple 40-hour work week and multiplying it by 2x, 4x, 8x. Our small research team of two or three turned it into a team of 25, working with professors and experts in small businesses across the country, from Harvard to the University of Utah. The AFRO Minority Leaders Program uses it to connect its students in HBCUs with their mentors at AFRL so that they can grow these young scientist careers. The Air Force Chief of Staff stood up a group of airmen and guardians and said, hey, what can we do with generative AI? They reached out to the MIT AI Accelerator and our own ACT3 team to create a chatbot that answers questions about Air Force policy like, hey, am I allowed to grow that mullet I've been thinking about? We've recently gone global, connecting, connecting our AFRL researchers with our partners in the United Kingdom, their Defense Science and Technology Laboratory, so we can accelerate advanced materials research. And the chief scientist of the Air Force used our platform when asked by Congress to develop a study on microelectronics, and she needed to connect academia experts with industry and government. And she avoided the mother of all toil. And you'll know it when I tell you it. It is the file name, final, final report, underscore, final, underscore, final, underscore, final, underscore, version 4, dot, doc, x. <laughs> and what's more, we've grown and expanded these capabilities of collaboration with the AFRL digital laboratory environment. So now our SNEs, our scientists and engineers, can collaborate on software. They can collaborate in program management. They can do systems engineering models and physics models, and soon so much more. You know, when, when Lauren and I started on this journey, our goal wasn't to buy some Gmail. Our goal was to solve a problem. And in doing so, what we tried to do, or what we did was our, we listened to our users and we aggressively sought waivers in order to give them productivity. We, we connected with stakeholders in government and allies in government and in industry to leverage the power of scale. And in doing so, I'd like to think that we changed the trajectory of AFRL's digital capabilities. And so my question to you is, how can you use these ideas and these tools in your own research to accelerate your productivity? How can you connect with your partners better in ways that the tools before would never allow you to do so you can access scale? And what more can we do from a digital capabilities perspective to keep you from wasting your time? Because at the end of the day, time is the only resource that us and our adversaries have exactly the same amount of. And in order to stay one step ahead, we have to tackle the toil. Thank you. Hard to follow that, wow. <laughs> so Dan, as you've seen, has done amazing work finding wingmen around the lab to make the right connections to push us further into the future, or the 21st century. And the important thing is, as you saw what he mentioned, Google recognized us with an award. It proves that what he's doing is not only working, it's essential. So one more round of applause for his team. That is incredible.